the most important thing you think you've learned over the last three months. Go ahead, Tim and then Missy. Uh, you can take off your mask, people can hear you, and then put it back on if that's okay, if that's what you want to do, all right? Talk loud. The most important thing that I have learned in the past three months is to not take things for granted. Let's go, not take things for granted. Good answer, man. How about you, Missy? I learned not how to crash a giant truck. You learn how to not crash a giant truck. Okay, I, I appreciate that you have not crashed a giant truck. Thank you for that. Um, all right, so who else, who else? What's the most important thing you've learned? Abby. I can't think of maybe the most important thing, but I guess there's a couple that like, America is not about fear. Um, we can still handle a crisis, and fellowship is a lot more important than I thought. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Chris. Emma. Sorry, I did not even see you there. Loud. Uh, to kind of instruct God and like to not, not like, but not to like, not believe in him in a sense. Okay. To believe in him more than I have. Okay. I'm not really trusting him as much as I have. All right. To trust him more. Okay, to trust him more. That's good. That's good. All right. Next question. Oh, you want to answer that one? Go ahead. Say that louder. People need to hear that. Have you? Do you guys hear that? Just because you're apart from people doesn't mean it changes your relationship with people. Uh, that's that's huge. That's good. That's wisdom right there. That's good. Um, all right, here's the next question I got for you guys. If there's one way you want to see yourself different in one month than you were one month before all this happened, what would it be? What would that thing be? One thing you would like to see different about yourself in one month from now that was normal for you or was a part of you a month before all of this kind of started to happen? It's a big question. Anyone have anything that comes to mind, Benny? Uh, just to learn how to disrespect people more, just be willing. He said learn how to respect people more. He didn't say learn how to disrespect people more. Mm -hmm. All right? He said learn how to just respect people more and be more loving. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What else? What else? Anybody else got something? Still You're still thinking? Okay. Paula. It's Paula. To be a better listener. To be a better listener. Come on now, to be a better listener. Some of you guys weren't listening to that. To be a better listener, that's a good one. That's a really important one. All right, so we have some things, and maybe you're still thinking about what those things might be for you. Um, but now here's my last question uh, for you. What has grieved you the most over the last three? It doesn't have to be specific, but it can be general. So Dakota, then we'll be loud, Dakota. What's that? Say it louder. The coronavirus. The coronavirus has grieved Dakota a great deal. Okay. All right, Logan. Um, segregation between our country. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that stinks. Uh, Not being able to have like, fellowship with everybody. Not being able to have fellowship with everybody. How about this side of the room? Uh, Tova. Um, the amount of anger that the country has. The amount of anger. And like, the depression that we faced yeah. in the recent weeks. Yeah. Okay. Missy? The impending doom of rising tensions between nations. Okay. That is, there is a lot of impending doom about that. <laughs> uh, Abby? Um, anyone else have something? Okay. So
So here's what I want to talk about, okay? Because one of the major things we're going to do together today is we're going to spend some time worshiping. Um, we're going to spend some time worshiping. Uh, like a lot of time worshiping, okay? Because we need to spend some time just singing, okay? That's what we need to spend some time doing. But before that, um, we need to talk about something really important. Hey, Zach! What's up, bud? Why don't you grab that seat over there? Or, oh, there's a seat over here? Uh, there's a seat over here somewhere, apparently. Okay, right behind Abby. There you go. You might not be able to see me, but I'll be walking around like this, okay? All right, so um, here's something I really want to talk about because this, this is something that uh, is so so important for us on, on a really deep level that experiencing what we just experienced uh, or what we're in the midst of experiencing brings this to light because we're not used to thinking this way. Uh, and we'll talk about this, this way of thinking uh, for the next few minutes that I just, I think right now that if there's one thing we can learn, if there's one thing that we should have on the forefront of our minds, if there's one way in which we should desire to change in the upcoming months, I think it's this, because I think this affects everything else. All those other little things, all those uh, maybe minor things, they, they are changed by this big thing. Um, and that big thing is this. We need to think about what is important in light of eternity, not in light of right now that our minds should be focused on what matters forever. And if our minds are focused on what matters forever, that will trickle down and it will change the way we live right now because we will make decisions right now that impact eternity for others and for ourselves. So often we get hung up in the right here and the right now that we begin to make decisions only about right here and right now. And when that happens, we lose sight of the eternal. It's really easy to become hung up on what we miss, on what we have, on what we don't have, on the problems, on the difficulties. It becomes really easy to become overwhelmed by all that if we're not looking at it from the perspective of God and from the perspective of what is eternal, but what will last forever. And so we, we have a tendency to spend time on what we value. And if we value what only lasts here and now, we'll spend most of our time focused on things that only last here and now. But if we can change our value to what is eternal, we'll spend more of our time focusing on those eternal things and I'll bet that we find that when we focus on the eternal things, it impacts how it is we live in the here and the now. I'll give you an example of this. Brett, Katie, you guys are done with Give it up to these guys right here. Right? <laughs> Is there no one else done with Ow! right? That's going to surprise me. No? I had that happen one year. One year, someone did their entire senior year in one month. Please don't do that. It makes things complicated. All right? Uh, but you guys don't play with me, right? Your junior and senior year of high school, if you had to rate the amount of pressure you were under to decide what you were going to do with the rest of your life between 1 to 10, how would you rate it? Brett, between 1 to 10. Like nine or ten? Okay, how about you, Katie? A ten, right? <laughs> right? Hey, how old are you, Brett? Eighteen. Eighteen years old. How old are you, Katie? Seventeen years old, okay? When you were a junior in high school, how old were you, Brett? Seventeen. Seventeen, and you were sixteen? Right? So so what what this is what we do culturally, right? We tell somebody who's sixteen, we say, Alright, listen, I know that your life experience on this earth hasn't even let you got a license yet for a car. 
And you've only been driving for a real uh, a little while, and it's been a provisional license. But here's what we need you guys to do. We need you guys to make decisions that will affect you in your 60s. We need you guys to figure out exactly what you want to do, where you want to go, who you want to be, when you want to have a family, what you want that family to look like. Where do you want to live? How do you make that decision? How are you going to invest your money? All of these things we're doing, right? In the meantime, you can't even drive yet. And, and, we're, we're, and the reason we do that is because we're so this world focused. And it's a lot of pressure. It's a real lot of pressure. Brett, do you feel overjoyed when you had that much pressure to figure out what were you gonna do? No. What did you feel? I felt like, uh, like scared and stuff. Like I was like afraid of like... Brett said he felt scared, he was afraid. Now, how did you feel when all that was happening? I was very, very stressed, right? So when you're scared and, and you're stressed out, when we're living lives like that, that, that are so wrapped up in, in right here and right now, now it's, I'm not saying it's not important to think about those things, it is, right? But when we're living like that, how much time do you have? Brett, how much free time do you think you had in the last six months to think about your relationship with God, how you're gonna serve him with your life and what he really wants for you? How much intentional time per day do you put into that? Probably not a lot with like school and stuff. Probably not a lot with school and stuff. How about you, Katie? Same thing, right? Same thing. It's, 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 now, that's not to say anything bad about you or about you. That's our culture. That's who we are. We think about the next thing. We think about two years from now, four years from now, five years from now, we tend not to think about eternity. Now, if our eyes, what I'm gonna say here is this, if we set our eyes on those eternal things and we ask God the questions of, who do you want me to be, God? Where do you want me to go, God? How do you want me to serve you? And we start to align our lives in that direction and go where God wants us to go, even if we're unsure exactly what that looks like, but we start to align ourselves in that direction we, we go in the direction God wants us to go, whether that's the plain stuff he's revealed to us in his word or, or the stuff he's given you in your dreams and your passions. And you start moving in that direction to serve and to honor God. The way you live your life here and now is going to be impacted by that. Let me give you a real clear example. How many of you guys have jobs? All right, how many of you guys who are less than 18 have a job? All right. Give me the top three things you've heard about what to do with your money. Uh, somebody, couple. Save it. Yup. Spend it. Yup. And then... Burn it. Burn it? Make <laughs> <laughs> it rain. And, um, I don't know. Okay. Don't know all, right, all right, we'll do two, because three's kind of hard, right? Yeah. And, Okay. All right. Somebody else. Somebody else who has a job. Top two things you've heard and what to do with your money. Josh. Top two things. Same thing. Haven't really heard much. Haven't really heard much. Okay. One more person from this side of the building. Missy, you have a job? Yeah. What are the top two things you've heard about what to do with your money? Uh, my parents will tell me what to do with it. My, my money makes it so much hard enough. Yeah, but I mean from other people. You know, you, you have people speaking in your life, your boss, I don't know, your friends. Anything? You hear anything? No, they just let me go freestyle. You know, <laughs> you know, one of the things, unless unless you you know unless you're intentional about this, and, and this isn't a dig on anybody, it's just an example. We tend not to have what we we tend not to have in the forefront of our mind investing in the kingdom of, of God. We tend to have. Save it, don't spend it, save it up for college, right? You got your books coming up, all those things are important. Buy a car. Buy a car, all those things are important. But we tend to have God down here somewhere. 
to ha really happen down here somewhere. Some of you have heard this story, some of you haven't. I'm going to share this with you. I have one other thing to say, and then we're going to sing. Okay? <clears throat> um, as a father and a husband, I know about the pressures of this world. I got to pay bills. We have rent. We have rent that is due. We have a car payment. We have to buy food. We have kids we need to provide Christmas presents for, right? You got to do that, okay? Now, uh, some of you have heard this before, but bear with me on this if you have. Um, I learned something about thinking about the eternal, and hopefully this example makes sense. Um, one of the things that I learned uh, a while back, uh, I learned the hard way. God uh, really told me and my wife one day to give somebody $100. Like, literally, like, I was like, give them $100. Like, this family, they need 100 bucks. I had like $102 in my bank account. And it was right before Christmas. And we had McKenna and Kalyana. And um, I didn't get paid again before Christmas time. So I struggled with that. And I, did, I went through my whole series of, yeah, but what about, right, in my mind. I talked to Jen, we prayed, and it was clear that that's what God wanted us to do, okay? God wanted us to bless this family. Now, there was a reason for that that I would find out much later, okay? It actually had an eternal purpose. It wasn't just because they needed 100 bucks. That actually impacted them in a way that was very spiritual and changed them for, you know, and, and really, really helped them in their understanding of what love is and who Jesus is. So it... There was an eternal impact that that had. But all I could think about was the bills or Christmas. <clears throat> what I didn't realize God had already done is he had already figured out how to deal with that. So we gave them the $100. We made sure they didn't know it was from us. It was, you know, uh, anonymous and all that. And the next week, I'm down here, uh, you know, getting McKenna. And some lady, I hadn't even met her before. She's a member here, didn't know her. I had no idea who she was. She come running after me. She said, Chris, 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 Chris. Last week, God told me to sow into your family. All right, it's a Christian way to say give you money. All right. God told me to give you $100. I wrote this check last week, but I couldn't find it. Here it is. So when God had told me to give this other family $100, he had already told this other woman to give me $100. He'd already taken care of the temporal thing. He already took care of the here and now. He already took care of the bills question. He already took care of all that. So the reason, the only reason I, now that was supernatural, right? But the only reason I bring that kind of thing up is because sometimes when God tells us to do something, we stop what God's telling us to do because we're so focused on right here and right now. And what we really need to be focused on is the eternal value of what it is that we're doing. Because God knows what he's doing better than I do. God knows what God... Listen, if God can, God can give me a hundred bucks, right? He can do that. God can do that. And do, so the reason I bring that up is because... Sometimes in our lives, we have all of these physical things and all these things about life, and our focus is so much there that we miss out on the blessings that God has for us when we follow him, when we're open-handed, and we say, okay, Lord, wherever you want me to go, I'm going there. How? I don't know, <laughs> but I trust you, you know? Now, what I think a time like this could teach us. And it doesn't matter if you're 12 or 18 or 37. I have to think about that for a second. <laughs> 37. It doesn't matter how old you are. What this time that we've been in can teach us a couple things. One, everything that we know that brings us comfort can disappear like this. Gone. One day it's here, the next day it's gone. The other thing 
is that the people we're so used to being around every day, the next day, gone. Now, it doesn't mean we don't value the people, and it doesn't mean we don't value living in this world, but what it does mean is that when we set our eyes on the eternal and see what God is doing, and we allow what God is doing to inform who we are and affect how we live day by day, we tend not to take those things for granted because our eyes are off the ground and our eyes are on God's beauty and what God's given to us and what God's doing. So much of our time is spent like this. And we can't see past our own feet because we don't lift up our eyes. And so, like, the care we show somebody only happens here because I can only see you when I'm this close because I'm too busy looking at myself. But if we keep our eyes open and we keep our eyes out there on the eternal, we get to see each other. The only reason I can see all of you right now is because my eyes are up. All right? Now, it's easier said than done, and there's more we can say about it. But I know, I know that at this stage in your life, there's a lot of pressure to think about everything in this life. But if you follow God and you set your eyes on him, and you follow where he tells you to go, even if you're unsure what that looks like, all of the things of this life will fall into place. Adam. It's just like that analogy where we say um, about walking in a cave and you keep bumping into rocks and stuff like that, but God's handing us a flashlight and all they have to do is turn it on once you do that you can actually see. Um, but the rest of the world is just walking around in a cave. You know, nothing else means anything, so we need to be able to have the light shine so they can see things. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you didn't hear that, ask Abby about it later. Eddie, come on over here. I talk too much. So here's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to spend a few minutes. You can come over. I'm just coming here. We're going to spend a few minutes, eyes on the eternal. 